like Austin, Dallas, San Angelo area. And then I'm way the fuck out here, dog. So Texas is it's random right now. <laughs> <laughs> what took you what took you to Dallas? Uh my job, man. So when I was in South America, I was working remote for uh like a tech company. Um and they basically were like wanting to promote me at this point. And they were like, we want to promote you, but uh, we want to go ahead and bring you towards like the corporate office, you know, like bring you to the main office. And I was like, all right, well, let's, let's, let me, let's have like a, me- a couple meetings and stuff. So they flew me out to the Christmas party last year. Um, got to meet like the CEO and the COO. Um, and we had a couple conversations and then we started negotiating like, well, if we gonna move, we need, I need like a relocation package. I need, uh, um, we're going to need a salary bump. Obviously we need Ooh, to change yeah. this commission, commission structure a little bit. Cause I don't want a floor, you know, I mean, I'm not in sales, but like as a, I basically went from a project manager to a senior project manager. So I work with bigger accounts, bigger companies, like bigger phone systems while we're working with their networks and firewalls and you know, all this stuff, man, you know, I'm a nerd, bro. So that's where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Um, so to be able to do that, it was like, whenever I move an account from like when we first installed them to the end, like it was like, okay, you get a bonus or commission on that account, you know, cause they just, we signed, we signed them up. We did their install, their networks up and running. Cause my thing is to make sure it's up and running. You know, mm-hmm. or we make the adjustments we need for their network, their system. We get it up and running. They just signed a five-year deal with us, your contract or whatever. Boom, I get a percentage, you know? So it's like, <laughs> it's great. But it's one of those things where it's like, you have to do enough of those and then commission hits. So I was like, I don't want that. Just make all of them count, you know? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Like, Full no commission for me. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So a lot of good negotiations and stuff based on their demands and, it worked. They gave me a good moving package. Uh, still working with my lady to get out here. She actually comes out here Saturday, so that's exciting. Hey. But it's not the official. It's not the official official because we still got to work about or worry about the visa for marriage and all that stuff. So oh. she can visit. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been engaged, bro, for like <laughs> damn near ever at this point. But <laughs> but, it's, but it's like it's happening. Like it's happening. Yeah. It's, it's it's definitely happening. It's just one of those things, like all the the legal processes, you know. Mm-hmm. But when they, when we get it when we get the date, man, make sure you're there, bro. I'm uh, cause I've please, known you for a bro. long time, so please, bro, please, yeah, bro. man, that's I, gonna I love, be exciting. Um, cause I do like, I mean, I don't want this to sound weird, but like I thought about <laughs> I I thought about her, bro. The moment you're like, yeah, I'm in Dallas, and I was like, wait, I said, but but, but what about Lady Basics? Like, what the fuck? Right. Like, <laughs> where is she? Like, what, is she here now? Like, this is gonna be so sick. Uh, cause I actually have to go into Dallas, um. I was going to hit you up about it, but I got to go into Dallas though. Um, either end of this weekend or like mm-hmm. sometime next week. So, uh, man, I hope to, I hope to stop and like catch up with you in person, man. Cause yeah, dude, we've, yeah, we've, definitely. damn, it's close to, it's, it's closing in on 10 years that I've known you now, man. Yeah. Uh, Cause yeah. I, I stopped. I met you when I was taking that break from Crump and that was like 2016 I think mm-hmm. um and that's when I moved up to you know good old Oxnard Ventura area you know what I'm saying yeah bro <laughs> yeah bro dude and I just moved I just moved from there about two weeks ago uh yeah. to North Carolina so when you were talking about like that relocation package and shift work I'm like absolutely because right. that shit's expensive Necessary. moving bro, bro. absolutely and it's yeah. not on us either they need to cover it they need to give something they need to do something because Bro, it, it's too much, bro, moving and then like the first month that you pay or wherever you're at or the, you know, while you're in between, you're paying for hotels. You're like, hey, no, no, no. You guys cover all this. Yeah, I need y'all. <laughs> yeah. I need y'all to put that on that company card, my Right. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, that's funny. That's tight though, bro. And you were doing, dude, you Focus. were doing a fucking lot of you were doing a lot of work down in down in Colombia, right? And, yeah, man. And you were you were there for like what, like four three years? years? Three years. That's three years. Yeah. Damn, bro. What do you think was like your favorite moment while you were down there? Um, who are you gonna get me emotional, man? <laughs> uh, 
there's there's probably two of my two of my favorite moments. Uh, one for sure, the proposal for sure, mm-hmm. like in front of her parents, getting her parents approval and stuff, and propo- like, bro, they don't even speak English. Like, <laughs> but you know, le- me learning enough to have that conversation with them, you know, was was mm-hmm. amazing. Um, and then second, uh, there was a tournament and, um, one of my little homies that I was training for a long time, like me and him ended up in the finals and he just, he tripped bro. And he actually beat me in the finals. Like, I'm not going to say it was a fluke or anything. Like, I'm like, damn, you deserved it. Uh, the reason that one's emotional is because literally like a couple months later, which it's, um, you know, been a couple months now, but yeah man i don't know he went to the hospital they said like his his heart was enlarged and he passed away bro and he was like bro this dude was like 24 years old bro Mm. like super young fit in the gym all the time working in school at the same time to be like an electrician like it was random i was like whoa like uh like Beast got to meet him when he came out, bro. Like when he, when I had him out here for my event and stuff, he got to meet him. Um, he was zero X, uh, but his own crump name was Africa because like, it's weird. Like they have like he had an African fan, but it's like black people in Colombia. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, which is crazy. Cause I learned that history of like, there was slavery in South America too. Like, you know, they didn't only go across this way. They went down that way. So there's a oh, lot yeah. of, that's why there's a lot of dark people in Latin America, man. They have African descent, you know, mm-hmm. it's interesting. Yeah. The South, the, yeah, there was like a whole, a whole thing I listened to about like the South American um, slave trade and shit in there. And so, mm-hmm. it, yeah, it, it opened up my mind to where it's like, yeah, you know, you hear so much about what we went through here. And it's kind of like right. that idea of like, you always know what's going on in your own neighborhood. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So in our neighborhood, we know we knew about what was going on, but like the Spaniards down there were doing some crazy shit too. Like they had their whole, yeah, man. whole little project going on, man. Yeah, dude. And well, you know, I, I want to, I want to definitely make sure I say my condolences on that, you know, about your, about your, about your friend, your little homie and stuff, man. But like, that's a that's a crazy part about Crump that I'm really starting to realize too, bro. Like like I was saying with you, I've known you now almost damn near ten years, and it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it's been that nah, long. bro. I'm like I know you like three years, like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you know, and but that's like a that's a beautiful thing about Crump, man. Like you meet people, and then time flies because you're having fucking fun, and then you know life takes you in all kinds of directions. Yeah, and and sometimes there you know directions we can't follow and. And it sucks, but it's it's tight to have those memories because you've been in Crump for over a decade now, you know. Well, yeah, like, bro, almost like nineteen years. I'm almost yeah, on two almost, decades. Almost two decades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I started like when years. I was fourteen, bro, like two thousand four. So yeah. we're almost right there. Literally next year, probably after like August or July, because it was like summertime, like right before. It was actually like the beginning of my freshman year in two thousand four is when I discovered Crump and started watching and. You know, looking at like Shake City and all these other like DVDs and yeah. you know, that was that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um are you like are you hopping straight into some crump shit now that you're in Dallas or are you kinda are you kinda taking your time getting into that? Well, I can't even dance right now. Um I'm actually in therapy and recovery. Um I had a crazy like pinch in my sciatic nerve and like I couldn't walk, I bro. About that. Yeah. yeah, like I had to get like an injection and uh that was for like the pain. And then I had to get like wheelchair assistance for a while. I'm able to walk and stuff now. Like it's not bad. I mean, I have a little limp, you know what I mean? But I definitely can't dance on this. It's like, I have to get the muscles stronger and like my hamstring, uh, the piriformis, which is like the top of your butt, lower back. And then, um, I do have a doctor's appointment coming up to like get an x-ray to make sure it's not my spine, you know? Okay. Um, but I mean, this happened October 7th. So it's been a month now uh the hardest parts excuse me i got the hiccups the hardest part's probably like the morning mm. that morning when you wake up and you haven't moved for hours yeah kind of <sighs> stiff and shit yeah yeah it's stiff and then like if i sit straight up it feels like something's like stabbing my leg like oh. literally like my hamstring like so if you sit on the edge of the bed like i feel like there's something stabbing me like which sucks because I got to stretch a little bit. And, you know, you got to sit on the toilet in the morning. Bro, it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> sit down. Like, my butt on the toilet seat hurts because the muscle and, like, the nerve under my leg is just 
like messed up. So what did you do? Did you like fall or something? Or like how did Bro, you how I woke did you know up about this? And got out of the bed and fell to the ground. And I was on the ground for three hours. Honey, something's wrong. <laughs> bro, like, I'm not gonna lie. I started crying, bro. And then she started crying. Like, I thought I was like, I'm never gonna walk again. Like, I oh couldn't my move my leg, bro. Like, I was done. And then like, if I tried to even, I was laying like this, because if I tried to go straight, I would feel the pull of the sciatic nerve on my leg. Like I was like, it was like lightning going up my leg. So I'm like, oh, nope, stay here. And I'll be like, all right, I gotta roll over. I'm like, nope, all right, I can't. So I was like that, bro, for like three hours. She helped me up off the ground when I had to go to the bathroom, which was the craziest pain. But then she had to walk me to the bathroom, bro. And I was like, this is crazy. Hey, yo. Yeah, bro. It was nuts, yeah. man. I thought I was done. Like, that's probably the reason why I broke, like, it broke me the most. Like, I was like, I'll never dance again. Am I ever going to walk the same again? Like, it, the funniest thing, though, in that moment was like, I was like, Barry call my supervisor tell her i'm not gonna make the morning meeting <laughs> and my oh, supervisor my was God. laughing like bro where are your priorities like go to the hospital <laughs> i'm like but i just want y'all to know so i don't get fired because i like this job <laughs> yeah. yeah i like how we're like in life like life altering yeah. pain and we just think about responsibilities dancing and then job oh no right man it's freaking nuts but um yeah man i'm, I'm confident that everything's gonna be all right it's just a matter of time like and it's one of those things where it kind of inspired me. Like when I get better, then I'm going to get into the gym and get my muscles stronger, like my legs, I'm, you know, everything, just get everything stronger again. Um, and I'm like, yeah, I need to get back in the lab after that. Like I'm, I need to dance because I have an ability that I can't just push to the side. Like a, mm -hmm. not a lot, not everybody can do what we do, bro. So I'm not going to take it for granted. And as long as I can dance, I'm going to, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. And, and a lot of people, I mean, I've been in construction for a long time. I've had my own injuries. And even before mm. Crump, you know, I was dancing a long time, dancing with CJ and all these other people. Yep. And that's one thing that really kind of made me pick up the podcast, bro, because there's been some days where like, I can't move. Like, I just like, like walking upstairs hurts. Like, it just hurts my knees. It hurts my feet. And I'm like, yo, bro, I can't do this dancing shit forever. Like it's, right. it's, it's going to come to an end. So it's like when I do dance, it did help take off like a lot of that pressure, you know, cause I'm still relatively new in crump, you know? And it's like, but it takes off a lot of that pressure of, of like, Oh, gotta be so good. This and that. It's like, no, just enjoy it, dude. Like, mm -hmm. yes, be good, you know, get better and stuff, but just have fun. Like, cause this, this shit ain't going to last forever. Old, old damn bones. <laughs> oh, yeah. Honestly, that's the best way though, man. Like the way all of us got, better or even came up was it was fun the battles were fun the beef was fun like even when we were doing crazy stuff man like talking crazy to people is because it was fun <laughs> like you know what i mean like it wasn't about fighting it was like i'm talking crazy to you because i know you're gonna want to battle me and i've been laughing so I'm, i just tricked you you know <laughs> like, <laughs> tricked you don't want to call me out because i was ready for you the whole time <laughs> so it's like that stuff was fun to us which is a horrible mindset to have because like yeah that's a deeper conversation but <laughs> it's just, that's a good old man yeah i mean you know it's uh, a <laughs> that's like a form of manipulation in itself but <laughs> in general man that's what i was gonna say that's a deeper conversation <laughs> but you know we would do that go through that process and it's like all right well now let me lab for the next time because i'm gonna try to do it again next week you know so mm -hmm. that constant energy of what we're gonna do and it's fun like it made us get better and it was fun to get better. And there were so many of us having fun. And it's just like you're in a constant place of creativity that it felt endless. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's just like, bro, this is so fun. Yeah. <laughs> so you just keep going and going. And then the part that messed it up for a lot of people is as we tried to bring in business, because as we got older, people started having kids. And now it's like, oh, I got pressure. I need to make money. Or, oh, we need to do this. And I need to get my own place. And we need to pay this bill. And you know, and then now money's involved and people's relationships are falling apart. And we start realizing a lot of us aren't good with business. Um, some of us are selfish and it's like, you know what I mean? It's this whole process and things just went to hell, bro. Cause it wasn't fun anymore. Um, it became about what do I need to do? Or I need to beat this person. Or I need to win this battle so I can get booked for this place. You know, they're only mm -hmm. going to see people that are, they only want to book people that are winning. 
So, you know, it's, it became a different pressure and I enjoyed it for a while, but that's why I took that break in 2016 and had that job with the casino, you know, players casino. And I moved up there and because they were just like, we'll relocate you as a new opportunity. We'll put you in housing. We'll do this whole thing. And I was like, Oh, that's awesome. And I can just work, make money, save money. You know what I mean? And it was a good opportunity to do that without stress. Um, which was the start of me gaining weight, you know, <laughs> <laughs> making money, eating good food, not worrying about nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Dude, even being on the road, bro. And just like taking away a lot of the, the day to days that I usually do, bro. I'm starting to put on some weight, man. I need to hit the fucking gym. You start food. ordering food and stuff. And it's like, let me Uber eat this to me. <laughs> well, yeah, dude, I mean, I'm in a fucking hotel room right now, bro. So I got like yeah. Burger King around the corner. I got all this yeah. shit. There's no kitchen in here. So it's I'm a like, setup, hey. man. Yeah, it's bait and switch. It's a bait and oh. switch, dude. Um, what do you think? What do you think right now is like something that we could add to Crump or like people could add to Crump to like keep it fun? Because like you said, man, like that is... That is, I think, like where the the best creativity comes from, the best bonds, you know, like if you're somebody mm-hmm. who just wants to make friends through Crump, like go where you have fun, like that they're fun. They're your type yeah. of fun. You know, they're your your tribe type shit. Um, what do you think you could add like or we could add, I guess, as a community? I think the fun. biggest thing is people being real with themselves, man. Like, I know that sounds like a harsh thing to say, but everyone's on different levels and in different positions. You know what I mean? Like someone's in a different position in life. Not to say that you can't get there, but some people, man, come out of out of high school blazing basketball and they go straight to the league, you know? And then mm-hmm. now they're in a place where they, it could be a career. Some people after high school of being great, you know, maybe you got in trouble, did something wrong and you ain't going to make it to the league. So all you got now is maybe trying to, you know, travel, <laughs> travel yeah. and make it something where you can make like some money somewhere else or whatever you can do. Um, or you just be like one of those people like, Man, back in my day, you know, and then mm-hmm. you just, all you got is community games, you know, the adult basketball leagues <laughs> that you see yeah. these old people in here talking crazy, <laughs> taking it so serious, you know, yeah. and maybe, and maybe that's it. You just need to be a community battler, you know, try to do something for your community, try to raise up people. Hopefully they can make it to the league or, and by league, I mean like the elites, like where people are actually booking all the time. They're traveling. They're getting paid off of Crump. People want to see them. They want to see their. They want to be in their classes. They want to learn from them. That's not everybody, you know. Um, and everybody has that dream, and they'll struggle until that dream comes true. And it's not. It's bad, man. Like, and I think a lot of people in other places kind of don't do it as bad as us in Cali. But I think it's real bad in California. But I mean, we're also the place where we have Hollywood. We have mm-hmm. Skid Row with some of the most homeless people in the freaking world, bro, because mm-hmm. everyone comes there for a dream. It fails and they struggle until they got nothing left. Um, and I think if people understood that reality of themselves, like I wasn't meant to be one of the best people in Crump. It was a good talent, but the video production and all these ideas of other stuff I added, like mentorship towards other leaders to make better decisions because of things that I've witnessed. You know what I mean? I've seen what works and I've seen what doesn't work. I've Mm -hmm. seen the selfish mindset. I've seen the bad business decisions and it's things that I've learned later, you know, especially going through like film school and like branding and all that. And I'm like, we could have did so many better things. Like, (laughs) and then I, and one thing I have to give it up to Sherwin for is he saw all the mistakes and he corrected them and did it the right way. You know, (laughs) and um, he built a team of people that were selfless rather than selfish. Mm -hmm. And he was able to make it work. Um, While when we were trying to do it, when I say we, I'm referring to like SK and stuff like that or Man Sanity or whatever. It's like everyone wanted it at the same time. So it's like, oh, I'm doing it, but you're making more than me. How is this going to work? And how are no like, you know what I mean? It just doesn't work, bro. It doesn't. That's never going to work. Um, or it was a position to where we all thought we were going to make a certain amount or something that was promised to us or a dream, but we never really knew the steps. We just saw the big vision without knowing how to get there and it just got discouraging, you know? Yeah. So, but again, it was the reality that's not there. A lot of us were refusing to have a regular job, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because we wanted to do that. Um, 
which is crazy because during that time, Sherwin was working a job, going to Bible school, and we were like, we're just going to dance full time, you know? <laughs> so it was like, crazy, hey, dude. Bro, struggling our ass off, <laughs> you know? And by the time I hit, like, you know, 26, I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. And that's when, again, I moved up there and I met you and everything. Um, and that changed my whole view on things. And I moved to Vegas, was working, trying to dance again, you know, but more of a hobby. Um, and then after that, I realized, what can I give back to Crump? Like, mentorship and helping people build communities, because I realized I was good at that. Mm -hmm. I was good at marketing and promotion. I was good at helping organize things and building up excitement. You know, like, and that was a test from KBL, bro. I know how to make people hype about something. So I'm Dude, like, okay. KBL battles are could, legendary. And, and honestly, I think it did its job. Like people's flyers started changing, you know, promotion and marketing concepts started changing. People started doing promo videos, which I haven't seen in a long time. I don't know if you noticed that. I haven't seen as many promo videos, but people They're used to do promo videos for events. Like, not just like, here's the information, but it's like, yo, these, deep, these two people are going to battle at this event. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Have them talking about each other, having them do whatever, like, you know, amazing things that made it feel like entertainment, um, which I think it's going to come back, man. I've been seeing a lot of stuff with uh, one of my friends. He has this whole thing uh, called KCS that he's working on, um, which I believe it's Crump Championship Series or something. And I was like, I've seen I was, that. I've seen yeah, that. I was like, hey, bro, and it's cooking. There's a lot of people behind it from other events that are behind it to kind of like push it where it needs to go. And I was like, Ooh, this is going to be something. I don't need to do the KBL because <laughs> KBL was inspired by rap battles, but KCS he's inspired by esports Cause he was a gamer, bro. Like it's someone that I grew up with and he, um, he was actually a pro halo player. Like he was sponsored by like Red Bull and like, I think he was on like cloud nine, bro. Like he, he was in there, bro. He okay. was in it. So okay. he's like, how can I turn Crump into like an esports to where it's like these people are athletes. We have all this other stuff, you know. So it's exciting, man. He's he's doing he's doing amazing things, and KC, KCS is going to be, it's definitely going to be huge. Um, but again, it's going to take that reality because not everyone's trying to be the going to be the face. Not everyone's going to try to get sponsored. Not everyone's going to be the star player. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. everyone has that hope and dream. But I think when everybody gets to the reality of what their role could be, they'll be able to do it full out and you won't be disappointed and it'll be fun. Like I want to help, you know what I mean? Like I don't want to be the front of KCS. I don't want to go compete. Like what can I do for video to make this crazy? You know what I mean? Like, let me ask him if I can work for him. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cause, and I'm not going to like, Oh, let me bring KBL back to compete with him. Like, bro, that's stupid. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the biggest things with Crump too, is everybody wants to have their own thing. When if we did something crazy together, man, like we could have our own Olympics, like we could have our EBS, we could have our Illis, but everybody wants to have their own thing so they can represent their, you know, their city. They could all be organizers. They could all get the profits, which most people don't make profit. Yeah, <laughs> man. lose money. Yeah, and I think <laughs> there's a lot for dance of events. And I and I think there's a lot of like there's a lot of weird. Um, there's still a lot of like this weird like grab at this idea of what did I bring to Crump, right? Because a few years ago, there was that big argument of like OGs versus vets versus heavy hitters versus rookies. So I think people kind of still head on, held on to that idea and they're grabbing at the idea of, well, I brought, oh, oh, I brought these type of videos to Crump and I brought this type of music and I brought this type of, you know, right. business through this event. Right. Yeah. You know, and, so with the with with the podcast at least my idea with like bringing crumpers on has always been like a lot of you guys are so talented in so much other shit like not only in crump <laughs> like you're good but you're yeah. good at other stuff too dude so like why yeah. not promote that and then or like if you do have a battle or you just had a crazy one bro let's talk about it like you know you had mm. this crazy uh shirt move like I wanted to talk to the dude uh God fuck I had his name written down uh Namix oh think, Namix is crazy he's young yeah. bro he's from Mississippi. He's from the South. Like he came out of nowhere. Um, he's amazing. Like I actually recently met him and I was like, yeah, Namix, Namix is a beast, bro. Dude, he's um, sick, bro. I watched this video. I was like, yo, he's because I see all you guys talking about him. 
I seen everybody yes. talking about him. I was like, yo, let's fucking go, dude. I'll, and, and, you know, talk to some of the rising, the rising talents and people yeah, who have had a moment. Like, you know what I mean? And, and support that. Support that 100%. Namix is one of those people, man, that out of high school got drafted to the league. And um, he got booked for some, like, smaller events. Bodied it. It's like, yep, it's going to give him bigger opportunities and bigger opportunities, and eventually he's going to be a main event on a card, you know? Not like, because mm-hmm. he's on other lists of like, oh, this is an exhibition battle or whatever, but like, it's like one of the earlier ones. Mm-hmm. But eventually it's going to be like, one of the main ones at the night, he's going to end up battling veterans. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's going to be big, and I think he deserves that. Um, maybe a couple more times of proving he can do it. Uh and really um, bring in something different every time. Because, you know, with enough time, you can prepare and do something amazing at least once, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes off of that hype, you can do it twice. But can you do something completely different than those two times the third time? Mm. Where's my fingers? There goes three fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing it like three. <laughs> oh, no, there it is. <laughs> But you know what I mean? I like, that's, that's an interesting thing. And um, I mean, I got all faith in him, man. Namix is like another uh, no one, bro. Like, for real. Just steps in like, and starts doing it. Right. And when he turns up, I'd actually like to see them two battle. That would be crazy. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, no yeah. one no one to me is like is is like more than when I see him dance, and there's a couple more, they're more than crumpers to me. They're they're dancers. They're really fucking dancers. Oh, yeah, no one no one is amazing. I don't think he even has training in it. He just is an incredible dancer that he's done it for a long time, you know? Mm. Yeah, I don't think he went to school for it or anything. He just watches, learns, and he loves it. And I think that's what he does all the time, you know? <laughs> that's crazy, bro. That's it's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, all, all, all respects, all respect, all respect, you know, but there's just some people who are just, you know, they just got it like that. And I don't want to take, I don't like saying it like that because I don't want to take away from any of his like hard work or, or efforts, yeah. you know, but like the dude just, the dude was tapped from birth. Like, you know, like to do, yeah. to do this dance and stuff. I really got it. I really got it for him. He's tight, man. A lot of respect. Like, how would you, because I don't remember the best explanation of this. Talent versus ability. Mm. How would you explain those two? Because I forgot which one is which. Like one is like you're born with it and one's like developed. Talent and ability. If those uh, are the right thing, if I'm saying it right. Ooh, I'm going to take a swing at it. And I'm going to think people are all born with natural talents. But then your mm. ability to execute on those talents comes through practice. Yeah, it comes through your practice and training. So, um, so then, yeah, I would say no one in like is one of those dynamics too, bro. I think he, him being new, they didn't train him a lot. And the craziest thing is, he got better than damn near everyone in the state. Mm. So who could train him that far? You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's why it's kind of like, damn, that's talent. You know, so yeah. yeah, there's ability. He loves it. He's training it, but that took some natural talent for sure. Yeah, yeah, I would. Hate that makes sense. See, I like that. I would hate to see what no one is going to look like, or Namix, or even like fuck, who's someone who's young, um, Winston. I'd hate to see oh, Winston, yeah, Winston. With, with 15 years of Crump experience under their belts. Yeah, bro, they're going to look fucking nuts, bro. And, yeah. and so I think. A lot of people who like to talk about about no one or or mm. anybody like that or like bullet bullet really sprung about bullets freaking crazy, head. freaking um. Well, he's growing up, so it's hard. He had a crazy like <coughs> mature change, but like icon, for instance, right? Oh yeah, um, I freaking incredible. But it's one of those things where like he was crazy as a kid. Mm-hmm. But then he grew up. So it's like you got to learn your new body. You got to, mm-hmm. you know, it's different. You know what I mean? And a lot of times people were hyping you because you were a kid. So now it's like, now you're a grown man and you got to fight for it a little bit more, you know? And mm-hmm. I see like his descriptions on some of his videos and I'm like, he's hard on himself. You know what yeah. I mean? I love the passion of it, but he's kind of hard on himself. But it's because, again, he was given something and then now he's like fighting and taking it. But he has a natural born talent. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but it's also a style change because your body's different. You understand more now. Now you're thinking while you're dancing and you're like, I'm thinking about everything. <laughs> oh my God. You know, and y'all have access to so much information at Beast Camp. You know what I mean? That it's like, that, that can get overwhelming, bro. It can get yes, overwhelming. It can. Yes, it can. Yeah, it yeah. can. Uh, we were just talking about that too. Uh, me and some of the boys from Oxnard, it was like, um, and maybe we, maybe you could speak to this about, about this a little bit in Crump too, is like, there's so many kids in Oxnard right now who are trying to learn different styles or be on different teams. And you mm. don't really see the progress that you would expect, you know, mm. from when you hear somebody say, oh, I'm training all day. And it's like, yeah, but are you like really applying? Like, are you being overwhelmed mm. by this information? Is it too much? Is it like, is this, is, is, is any of this shit even resonating with you? You know, like, because mm. sometimes I feel well, like. Uh, the thing is this, like, and let's say. I'll say it a couple different ways. Um, I know everyone believes something different, so I'm not going to push or force this on anyone. But Bible talks about serving more, like more than one master, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to love one more than the other. You know, you're mm -hmm. going to prioritize one more than the other. But at the same time, what that means is neither are getting 100%. Mm -hmm. So you're going to lack in both now. Uh, but one thing I've noticed over the years from my generation to like your generation, right? is we believed in specializing in things like there was so many of us right like i can't i can't be the person out here trying to have the craziest hat tricks trying to stand out next to mad hatter you know what i mean mm -hmm. like he's crazy you got it so what am yeah, i gonna do that. i'm gonna be a groover i'm gonna focus on texture and character and the mind of crump you know like i want to be there while you got people like knucklehead that are strong and they're th using their arms everywhere, like specialize in something. Don't be afraid of it. It's just like a career, right? Like you can get a general job. Like, oh, I got a general education. Bro, you just graduated high school. Now go mm -hmm. to the next part and specialize in something, you know? Um, a lot of times when dancers start working and doing other things, it's not because, oh, he's good at everything. Let's just throw him in here. Like, no, I want a specialty dancer. Mm. Like, oh, this person does Memphis joking. Like, let's put him in the shoe commercial. You know what I mean? Like, this is what we're looking for. Like, oh, we want something aggressive. Let's find crumpers. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it specialize in something. You know, we want something that looks fake. We need someone that's a popper. We need animation. You know what I mean? Like, we need mm -hmm. something there. So you start looking for certain things. So develop that specialty, and there'll be a more demand on your name. You know, mm -hmm. you're joining a team, and it's like, bro, but are you really an asset to the team? Or are you just another dancer? You know? Yeah. So you're training, okay, pick something and specialize in it. Like when I wanted to get better at footwork and balance, I trained that for like a year. Yeah, I was still dancing, doing other stuff, but I focused on it for a year. You know what I mean? Oh, I want to work on my body control. All right, well, I knew people that were popping and I wanted to apply it to my crump. I trained with them for about three years. You know what I mean? Like, and you still see people that, come from other styles into crump and they have a big influence on it because their movement's different. So now crump changes or dance changes because the influence of someone else. Sometimes you need to train with somebody else because that can change your ideas. You know what I mean? It can change your perspective on something. You just train it by yourself. You, you never know where you're really going. Are you really making progress? Who knows? How are you training? You know, are you training? Or are you just sessioning by yourself? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you, know, you know what I mean? Are you are you actually labbing? You know what I mean? Where you're creating from nothing, coming up with new ideas. Like that's how I see it, right? Like the lab is where you're creating new stuff, and then training's like I'm honing what I know as well as my body. Because mm -hmm. um, the lab is like you're experimenting. What happens if I put myself in this position? You know what I mean? And I do this here, and it's like. Oh, I like this. Whoa. But what if I do it forward? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or what if I just do it with my head? Like, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, I yeah. like that. I just did something crazy. What yeah. if I do it with my shoulder? Like, Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> so now you start putting all this stuff together and I'm cooking something up. Like I'm in the lab. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right. Now some people don't do that. They just turn the music on and dance. Mm -hmm. Hey man, that's cool. You might freestyle something nice. Did you, like you said before, did you retain it? Yeah. Probably not because you didn't think about it. You just did it. You know, do it on purpose. 
So. Ooh, do it on purpose. This. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Man. yeah. Uh, some of the kids too still ask me to like, uh, oh, what's the difference between, you know, they'll ask me, what do you see the difference between training and labbing and sessioning? It's like, well, you know, labbing should feel a hundred percent awkward. Everything should feel yeah. weird here. Like, and then whatever you like from this weird, you take it and you train it until it feels normal. And then you take that right. normal and you do it in the session and you see if people actually like it. See if you actually like this right now. You because mm-hmm. you can come go, you can, you know, we come up with shit in the lab, we do it in a round, and we're like, yeah, that's that's not it. Like that's that that movie. You do it and, and nobody gets hyped. <laughs> yeah, it was just you're like looking at you. Oh <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a that was a stinker. But, you know who um, you know who Dion Cole is? Dion Cole. He's a comedian. Mm-mm. Bro, he's a comedian and he uh his whole like style is like he'll come out with like a notepad. Like this is like one of the funniest things that he does. It's so funny to me. He'll come out with a notepad and be like, Hey, what's up y'all? I just want to try some of these jokes. Like <laughs> <laughs> he'll go into like a whole thing and tell a joke and he'll look around people laughing. He'll be like, check. Yeah, like yeah. that's a good one. You know, I'm going to keep that. <laughs> and that like, that reminds me of like what we should be doing in sessions, man. And ciphers are like, let me try something crazy. And like, I like that. No. All right. I ain't going to do it. You know, <laughs> God, and if they do, it's going, like, man. I got that. I'm going to expand on it. <laughs> God, that's so insane, dude. Like, yeah. really, really, the idea that we come up with so much different shit, dude, and, and some mm. of it never sees the light of day, you know? <sighs> never, never once sees the light of day. It's it's tough. It's a tough life for a dancer. Yeah, man. I agree. And I think, um, yeah, man, I, I think it's something to where, social the social environment of it can make it make awkward moments feel fun right like Mm -hmm. like when we're talking about the lab and feeling awkward like but if i'm labbing with you we're gonna feel awkward together we're gonna be laughing we're gonna be having fun it's like bro you gotta try this bro this (laughs) you see this one you know what i mean like and it puts you into that situation and maybe sometimes people need to lab with other people more you know um because again it's about the exchange like sometimes you do something crazy and it's like dang but how would i do that you know what i mean like oh i mm-hmm. like how in your mind you just went through a keyhole like i don't know how you did it but that was crazy but uh my door looked different you know what i mean like <laughs> <laughs> yeah i want to go through a castle's uh keyhole you know what i mean like <laughs> My body's a different type of key. Like it's gonna be my body, it's gonna be my leg. <laughs> so it's like it just opens up into this crazy world, and then it's like we're bouncing off each other, and then you say something different, and I'm like, "Damn, I do want to be a vampire." Like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you just go places, bro, and it's just so funny. But you enjoy it. It's like a playground. Yeah, dude, and like there's so many other. There's so many other things that I like to like relate with it where like, you know, in, in jujitsu or in wrestling, like if you're going to mm. go roll on the mat with somebody, like pick somebody who you're going to roll with, man. And your guys are going to like push each other. You're going to get into these awkward positions and yep. and maybe even kind of talk through it at the same time too. like, hey, bro, that was a good one. Like, hey, that was a good that was a good reversal. Right. Or, hey, bro, that was a good sprawl. Like, you know, and have somebody you're going to train with or. Um, right. You know, I remember watching the dudes rap at lunch, you know, and you would hear somebody say like a phrase or bring up a certain line. And the next dude who goes literally uses that same thing. Jump off. Yeah. yeah and, and keeps keeps it rolling. And sometimes, yeah, bro, I'd be feeling like that when I'm labbing with everybody, bro. Like, fucking dude, Kayo, a tomb rob, bro, or atrocity. He was mm-hmm. formerly known. I would look and he's doing all this fucking elbow shit and like behind him like all right I can't do that but I'm gonna try I'm gonna see what I can give with that right there bro but every time I love right. labbing I love labbing and being around him because he's always yeah. in these weird positions and it's like all right cool I can but what if I do it this way and I do this this way and kind of make right. it my own you know that inspiration that's a yeah. that's a fun that's yeah that's that's the part that keeps crumb fun man he's he's another <sighs> He's another one of those ones, man, straight out of high school to the league. <laughs> I wish I wish he had different experiences like in other states. Mm-hmm. I think cuz he 
he came from that breed of you know what i mean like someone like namix no one and all that and it hit in california but it's like dang i wish he got booked somewhere to travel and compete and then it he performed because he would you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um but i also know he had like a a kid and stuff too so it's like oh well that yeah changes your priorities (laughs) yeah yeah, (laughs) shifts you around that shifts you around a little bit yeah you can't be gone like that you know i mean you don't want to yeah be there with finn so yeah but I, i definitely like that's one of those ones I'm like, dang, he, the way that he was dancing, he should have got pushed forward faster, you know? Mm-hmm. And when he did that first rookie tournament, um, damn, like four of the boys from Oxnard were out there and they were texting me. They're like, yo, who is this man? I was like, oh, I've mm-hmm. never heard. I had like really never heard of him. And then when I seen him, I was like, oh, yeah, I know him. He's from Chicago. Like, you know, he dances, but I didn't know he was crumping. And this man he was, was from Chicago? If I remember right, yeah. he was. Well, when he, I first met him, he was in, like, the 818, like, preparing to be in, like, Beastville, I think, or Beast Camp. Oh, yeah. When I, by the time when I first seen him, you know? Yeah, yeah. no, he hopped out here, and, I mean, he just hopped off the fucking porch. It was him, Oxy, and Slavic. <clears throat> I remember they were Whoa. like the, they were like the three big ones in this rookie tournament that Beast ended up throwing. It was like to take um when he was trying Oxy to do like the, the two, man. bro Oxy. And see, and I had known I had known about Oxy. He used to be under like Onyx or something like that. Um he used to be like J Onyx or or some something like that. Um and I always thought he was tight, but then there, I don't know who he battled or what he did, but he he fucking just went off, and I was like, "Yo, dog, like you are really." And I mean, he's doing his fucking thing now. His what was a hype factory battle was really tight. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was See, and my battle. thing, like, like Oxy and Atrocity came out of nowhere for me. Well, or I don't know what Atrocity's new name is, but yeah, he came out of nowhere, and then. See, but Slavic, I can't – I'm not hating on him, but I saw him in 2017, mm. and he was trying to learn Crump, and he was hanging around with Bino, and you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, bro – and then he was, like, preparing to take, like, SLX. You know what I mean? I think that's when mm. he first met, like, Eyes, for instance. So it's like, mm, you've been around, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you're getting off, but it's not, you know what I mean? You weren't in the culture, but it's like, you were interested. You were watching it. You were picking mm-hmm. stuff up. You know what I mean? But like literally other people, like those two, I've never seen Oxy or Trusty at all. Oh yeah. Like that threw me the hell off, but maybe it's just my situation. Cause I wasn't in the place to see them, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah, they came. Holy crap. Yeah, man. Yeah, watching those three battle, I when I ended up watching the footage and watching those three battle, I was like, I was like, yo, dude, they're fucking, they're nuts. And they are definitely, um, yeah, I know like Slav really isn't in the culture like that, but like I am yeah. happy, I am happy for, for Oxy. His little homies are really tight too. Um, bro, Oxy's freaking dangerous. <laughs> I, bro, I never seen him in person until recently. He was out here in Dallas. Um, he battled limbs out here. And, bro, he was dancing just like Crush. Like, it was absolutely insane. Like, yeah. I had to make a whole post in the Crumbers page. Like, nope, this dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was That was incredible, bro. Like, yeah, that was probably one of the insane ones. Um, but I do want to bring something up because I was looking at the time and I was like, "Damn, I don't want time to get away from us too fast." Oh shit! Yeah, the 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 topic, man. Oh that yeah, you wanted, that you wanted to do this. Um, because I know I was just uh I was throwing off Facebook, but I was thinking about it recently, and I was like, "And I'm gonna let you, you know, bring it up." But well, not bring it up, but you know, say at least explain, you know, how you wanted to say it. But I was, it's something I've been seeing everywhere. And I'm like, oh, this isn't a trend thing at this point, you know? Because yeah. at first we see it and it's like, all right, it came up. It first, it originally came up in a controversial way, of course. Um, and everyone has different opinions on it. Uh, can't wait to share mine. 
and then it's like out of nowhere, bro, just freaking it's like a necessity for everyone to bring it up. And it's like boo. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like I've literally seen it on like ten different people's reels on Instagram. Like in the past like week. I'm like, bruh, boo. <laughs> yeah, now it's and, a trend and it's like losing whatever its purpose was but go ahead and it deserves a deeper conversation and that's why too uh that's why too i was like eh, i'm gonna just post this um so what are you talking about so okay so i guess to go from the beginning for anybody who wants to listen to this later is is recently in the crump in the crump world right in the crump communities um, a big topic that's been brought up has been the word around the word essence, what it is and what it means. Um, it was even it was even brought up on a panel at EBS, where in my personal opinion, I didn't like any of the answers given. It just for me, I was like, okay, but mm. if I was to write this down in a book and pass it down and pass it down, would it hold would it hold true and would it hold its weight? Mm. And I and I want to make sure that I give respect to everybody who did answer on that panel because even my big homie was on there. The creator of Crump was on there. Rex, mm. Taminator, all these other leaders of the communities were all up there. Respect y'all's answers, but for me, you know, there's just there's questions I would like to ask, and I think more input from the community because there is valid stances where people say essences from God which mm-hmm. is fine. But then I really, I really like how bad news tries to be like, well, it, it could be more than that because there's people who don't believe in God, which I respect as mm-hmm. well. And I respect that count that, that refutement of that argument. So for you, somebody who's been in Crump close to two decades now for you, mm-hmm. when you hear that word, right, how would you describe that to somebody? And what does it mean to you? Um, so anyone that knows me knows I'm like, uh, even when it came to like school or Bible stuff, right? I'm a very logical and like technical person. Like I'll break something down to the point where it's like, all right, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and my thing is, like, okay, we're talking about essence. My first thought is, well, what does the word mean? You know? Um, and there's two different there's two main different like definitions, right? But it, d- it depends on where you come from. Like, cause essence, that's actually like a sci- scientific word about like nature and like the source or like, um, like the raw properties of it. You know what I mean? Like it's, what is it that makes it what it is basically like almost like, Oh, the atoms, you know, would be the essence of basically like our bodies. You know what I mean? Like that's basically what it would be. Right. Um, And then there's the philosophy version, which is like, um, that would be like, without this, it wouldn't exist. Right. That would Mm -hmm. be the essence. Like the soul of our body would be our essence. You know, that's who we are. But then if you ask someone as a doctor, it's like, Oh, our heart or our brain. Um, Cause without your brain, your body's still moving. You're just brain dead, but you have your heart, you know, but without your heart, your body's dead, you know? So it's different things. Like, well, what's the essence to you? Um, So for me, when I think of, of Crump essence to me is really the identity of it. Right. And that's Mm -hmm. probably my favorite word. Maybe that's because I'm a character focused person as well as a style focused person that it's identity. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, if God is your identity, because that's what you believe in, then of course it's going to be God, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm a firm believer in God. That's Mm -hmm. part of my identity, you know? So yes, God is the biggest essence in my crump, you know, because that's what makes me who I am Um, as well as the logical technicalities in how I think and process is a part of the essence of my crump, you know, like without that, it's there. Uh, the way I feel and the way I express myself while I dance is where my essence shows up. Mm. So for you, it's probably different because your identity is different. So your essence looks different than mine. You know what I mean? But that's because 
you have a different life that I have. You have a different purpose. You have a different reason. Now, whatever you experience, that's why I feel that's what essence is. Um, now, without that identity, you can't put anything into it. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of times when you see somebody dance and you don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. And of course, the main thought is, okay, there was no essence. But what does that mean? There was no, and my, and this is again, my opinion. There was no identity. I didn't see you in it. I didn't feel anything of any part of you in it. It just died. It just was blank. You know, it's just a <laughs> shell. You're just doing stuff, you know, <laughs> like that's how I feel when there's no essence there. I don't see you. I can't relate to you. I don't hear you. You know what I mean? Like, that's a big thing, because if you know who you are, when I dance, I'm making a statement. You're going to hear it. You're going to see it. You're going to feel it. When I dance with texture, you're going to feel it like that's all there. Cause my essence is here. My identity, who I am is involved, you know? So I feel that's the best way to explain it. And that's not to say, Oh, it's just because it's politically correct. Yeah. Like, no, but I feel that that is exactly getting to the source of what it is. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at someone like, like bad news answers uh, of, Oh, it's not just God. Cause not everyone believes in God. Everyone should know who they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's what it is. Like bad news knows who he knows who he is. Mm -hmm. So when he crumps, you know, it's like that essence, that feeling it's identity, man. Mm -hmm. And, and that of course, you know, comes from different things, regardless of whatever people believe, you know, whether you believe in God or you don't, it's, it's up to you. Um, but it's your identity. Again, it's where it comes from. Now, where does your identity come from? Hey, that's your life journey. That ain't mine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know who I am. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's because of my experiences. Um, and I think some people that don't have essence don't know who they are. And I think that's the biggest thing. And that's one thing that I'll continue to 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 speak about in Crump is I think a lot of people are going through an identity crisis. They don't know who they are. That's why you see people on Facebook all the time talking crazy because you don't know who you are and all you want is attention. When you yeah. know who you are, you're like, bro, I don't care about that. Like, that's not important to me. That doesn't matter. But I know what matters to me. Like, mm -hmm. that's important. But a lot of people don't have that. They don't have that voice of reason. They don't understand who they are. And it shows in their dance. Mm -hmm. So that's my opinion. Yeah, so what do you think? So to, to my big problem that I have when when I do see it used or I've mm -hmm. heard it used is people are using it a lot of times to solely judge battles. Right. It's oh, like, that's like, crazy. You don't judge off of essence. It's like, yeah, it's in, and I've talked with people about it and it's like, yeah, you know, you can say that you felt somebody more, you know, you could, maybe you could tell that they were having For more sure. fun or maybe the problem I have with that is, is you're taking, you could be potentially taking a stance, judging a battle based off of your preferences because mm -hmm. maybe maybe you solely have a you have a natural inclination to their style right like right. to me right. yeah to me you're not going to blow my brain with fucking hat tricks and shoe tricks right but you do some like right. crazy like crazy like grimy shit over here i am going to fuck with you because i like that i like that i like that right. shit that's my shit right um, and so to say, so to, so I just think that that's a weird thing to judge battles off of. Um, but I do believe that there is a an essence of crump because there is some kind of there's there's an energy going on, right? There's a there is a a weird feeling that happens when like I remember do like coming up, going to eight one eights and seeing like you dread beasts you know concrete's probably there all these people bro mm -hmm. just like all these amazing dancers and there's a certain feeling that starts happening mm -hmm. where it's like just stand back and enjoy like you know just mm -hmm. watch what's happening right now because you guys are tapped in with yourselves so you're watching a really high level of creativity happen and mm -hmm. for this to be coming out of us and like out of our brains there's there's something going on there because i am a firm believer in god i am i'm a firm believer but i don't think i was called to like spread his ministry so i i hate to try to explain something to somebody who i want them to enjoy it in a way 
where it's like, well, the essence is this thing. Like it's, I, because to me, it is a very spiritual experience. It's a very God, very God given experience for me. Like, you know, like, like how you were saying, because my experience with life and my experience with dance kind of surrounded that type of, that type of idea Mm -hmm. that it's a bigger thing. Um, yeah, so you wouldn't agree, or would you agree with people judging battles using that in their... No. Okay. No, man. Like, because again, right, like, that feeling you feel at a session. Like, <clears throat> let me let me explain it this way. Um, regardless of being a firm believer or not, right, like, even if we wanted to affect someone else's life or introduce them to God or anything like that. You don't just say, oh yeah, man, well, God is God. Like, Mm -hmm. what does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, oh, he's, he's going to save you. Like Mm -hmm. how, like what is happening? You know what I mean? Like you can't just read me a scripture and just tell me what it is because that never, that won't, that's not enough. Like I need to have an experience. So in, and bro, it's never it's never that of just pushing that someone and telling them because God's not a he's not a mind trick. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like yeah. it's it's a hard experience, it's something inside, it's something in your spirit. That's what it is, right? Or your soul or whatever whatever people believe. It's you feel something, you know, whenever mm-hmm. there's certain types of encounters, whenever you're like, Oh, I don't think I should do that. Like, oh, my stomach told me I shouldn't do that. Like, you feel something. There's something guiding you, whether it's, hey, man, maybe you believe that your own body is God. Hey, whatever. There's yeah. something. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's something that will keep you alive, and there's something that actually will guide you as you move along, right? Um, now, while that's happening, the process of trying to reach someone has strategy, man. It always has had strategy. Because you affect someone's life, you change them, and then as they have more questions, then you show them what it is. Same way it's with Crump, bro, or anything else. If I want to introduce you to a way of making money, I'm not going to be like, hey, man. Well, actually, no, you could say you want to make money because people will be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people won't believe you these days either because there's scams everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like, I'm going to show you the process. I'm going to show you what's happening, and you see the results, and then you're going to be like, I want to be a part of that, you know? Mm. And that's the thing is, let me show you what's going on. You see the result and then you want more of it. Mm-hmm. That's what the session was always for. For me, you see what's going on. You see the result and you're mm-hmm. like, I want more of that, you yeah. know? And I feel like that's always what expanded Crump. Now you see something going on. People are exchanging. You feel what's happening. It's the raw version of these people's selves being here. That's what like the raw your experience, like, Oh, what's yeah. this raw feeling? Oh, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> it's because these people's whole identity is being expressed. Everything that is them is coming to life and you're seeing it, the rawest form of who they are. And you're like, this is insane. This person was just so quiet in the corner and I don't understand why he's dancing like this right now. Like, where is this coming from? It's coming from inside of them, you know, and you're like, I want more of that. How do I express myself like that? You know? Mm-hmm. And what do we say? Oh, you gotta tap into like, you gotta tap into, you, you know. Tap in, yeah, you gotta tap in. You gotta tap in. Tap in is going inward. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Into who you are. You gotta find it. You could see the people that fake it, you know, but no. People are sitting here like <laughs> and you're just like, what the hell, bro? <laughs> No, I mean, tap in, tap inward, get what's going on, stir it up. And you're going to feel that while you express that full freedom comes to place. And you're like, damn, I, man, I want, I want to feel that again. And it becomes man, I, an addiction. You man, know? I was battling kill bill. I was battling kill bill. And I remember, uh, I just remember everyone was like, tap in, tap in. Cause I was like trying to push through this round, man. I was really trying to push this last yeah. part of this round. And I remember, Fucking show off goes, hey yo, I'm trying to see you transcend. I was like, okay, yeah, all right, I get it. Like, all right, I got you, I got you. I'm about to go super saiyan, bro. Don't trip. 
Uh, man, and it is that's a, that's a just a, those feelings, those feelings of like, yeah, I'm trying to see you go to the next level, homeboy. Like, yeah, I got you. Got you. I can do it. I can do it for us. I'll do it for us right now. Uh, Transcend is crazy. That's a crazy. That was a you crazy. Want to, you want to see me fly, bro? You want me to die? Like, what is happening? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. God. But um, I think it just makes so much sense. You know. Mm-hmm like identity and expression of who you are. Um, mm. There's a reason why you could session with people. And then after I feel like you actually know them a little bit, you know, yeah. like, I know this person a little bit more because mm-hmm. you just saw another version of themselves, man. There's a reason why some people dance. They open up so much that they start crying. They have that experience. Mm-hmm. Cause the raw version of themselves came out whether it's, you know, whether you want to say spirit or their personality or whatever it is, man, it's something to where you can't hide in a session Mm. unless you just leave, (laughs) you know, (laughs) but you, you can't be in the session and hide, you know, now, whatever you want to call that encounter, whether it's you have an encounter with Crump, you have an encounter with God, you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, whatever it is, that's on you. You know, um, however you choose to label it, but your true self will be revealed, man. Yeah. Whether you whether you've been hiding stuff, you know, because we always like, oh, it's an expression, and if I've been going through stuff all day, of course, because you're gonna open up, you know, for yourself's gonna come out, and you have to deal with it. There's no hiding. You have to deal with it. Yeah. Whether you're gonna get angry, or you know, and there's some people that get mad and they start beefing with people for no reason, like you're projecting you know like mm-hmm. <laughs> and you got to know not to take it personal it's just the feeling so raw that the, they have to come out you yeah. know what i mean they have to come out and um i think that's where that concept of like spiritual warfare came from um Ooh, yeah but i think it was taken too far <laughs> in a certain <laughs> sense and it's like if it's spiritual warfare why are we trying to have like physical warfare you know, because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's not a body to body thing, you know, like these people don't know. And then it's like we're saying and doing things and then it's like it's twisting it up. But if it's spiritual warfare, it's something we can't see in the first place. You know, mm-hmm. we don't need to act out like we're in war. Like, no, now you're just being religious, you know, <laughs> so it's, mm-hmm. it's uh, uh, you know. Um, yeah, but yeah man, thing, there was a thing that Bad News had said and it stuck out. He said he just. He he used the he used the word sad that the sad. That the topic around God and Crump made people sad. And I was like, yo, that is such a raw way to put that. Like, you know, mm-hmm. we get so riled up or like, you know, you pissed people off or you made people feel this way, but like just to use those words to me was profound. Mm-hmm. Um and and I do I do look too because how you said it like your expression and being a part of yourself i think is so important and you know the s i use s and x not just because it like of spelling it that way in my name but it's an acronym where the s and x is self-expression crump offers our people Mm -hmm. self-expression corpse and so Mm -hmm. that was always a way that i kind of like i did entail when i started hearing like oh he doesn't you know, he just doesn't feel crump. It this, I, it doesn't feel like this essence. And I was just kept pounding in my brain, like, well, what is this? Like, you guys could say it's God, but how do I, how do I get there? Like, what? Because I'm trying to get there. I want to look like y'all. I want to experience this crump like you guys. So all I ever really relied on was, just, eh, just beat myself, dude. Just fuck all the shit. Because I, I remember I used to try to do hat moves. Like me and Bam, like like Bam was always good at hat moves, and I would try to do them, but I fucking sucked. So I was like, "No, dude, this is not me," I'm, and I'm not progressing. This doesn't feel good. This does not feel good on my body. And I remember like having talks with Dread and shit, and because you know I was under Dread back then. Mm-hmm. Um, and but I think these like these kind of conversations, and where you can hear these type of like more like drawn out you know like conversations people give you instead of in a fucking battle at 4 a.m somewhere in germany like in a parking lot probably or you know on facebook posts going back and forth where there's like two three hours of separation between responses there's all these responses and you're just trying to keep up and 
like these are these are the good con like i so i do appreciate i hope you know how much i fucking appreciate this right now dude oh for sure yeah yeah because because this is one of the things i'm hoping to do with the podcast too bro is have conversations yeah. about things like this because you're i mean you're somebody i trust with it you know that's why i was like i want the conversation <laughs> because it's something i've been thinking about as well you know um but again it's one of those things to where like well there's two things i want to touch on so before i like i don't want the bad news topic to push by too fast um but the sad word right um it's one of those things to where if we think of ministry right it's like things are done strategically like god plays a chess game mm. he doesn't play rugby <laughs> like we're just gonna hit each other until we see who got it at the end no 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 mm. no because he knows he already won you know that's the mm -hmm. concept of everything um so it's wise decisions that get there now i think a lot of times because it says you know take it by force people take that process and i think it's necessary um but in due time there's a way that you can you know play mental chess and take things by force and you get more things done you know um there's ways to reach people and help them in a place where you meet them where they are you know rather mm -hmm. than change your life <laughs> yeah. and i think that happened for a long time but i know that that was also the influence of what we were around you know but i mm -hmm. i agree that it was wrong and there was a lot of people hurt uh and i think there was way way better ways we could have handled that of meeting people where they are if we wanted to introduce them to god you know mm -hmm. um or just try to make their life better you know uh there was just a lot of things that were super super religious that were done um and i do understand that people were you know sad and now they're scarred when it's like oh crump is god and they're like oh here we go mm -hmm. it's a scar you know what i mean a lot of trauma involved in that um a lot of, dude that was the first thing i thought of was that was a mm -hmm. lot of you know to think about it you know at 18 you're a kid bro that's childhood yeah, we trauma. don't know that's childhood yeah. trauma for sure and other people that are saying it are older and it's like we don't even know who we are yet we're just doing stuff you know <laughs> um and a lot of times when we're younger and we're in church we still don't know who we are we're just doing stuff mm -hmm. like bro i didn't know what life was me being 16 in church like you know what i mean like saying what's right and what's wrong like yeah right i barely lived you know? <laughs> um so i just think that there was a lot of other strategic things that could have been done ways that people could have been reached mm -hmm. uh i do agree that the a lot of that main feeling and essence that we feel in crump comes from god um because there's no other way to explain what you feel you know mm -hmm. like, well, it's just a vibe what does vibe mean you know like it's yeah. just an energy uh, what's the energy you know because energy has life so there's something a living there what is it that's giving you that energy you know it's either mm -hmm. positive or negative it's positive okay well what's where does it come from mm -hmm. you know <laughs> so you know i understand that um i just think it again that there's a better strategic way to explain that and uh get it to where it needs to go to where if we need to infect or not infect <laughs> affect <laughs> affect people's lives you know um it can be done correctly uh which i mean crump is damn near an infection it just hits you and it spreads bro it spreads um, like a wildfire oh my god yeah um but it's a good one mm -hmm. if there ever was such a good infection <laughs> uh, oh man yeah, but, there's, um, a, there's a feeling with Crump that like, like how you were saying, like when I get, when I hear these things, I'm like, oh, well, it's just, it's a vibe. It's like, yes, but you know, I want to be able to explain this to somebody who might not know what that means. Like they, they just right. don't understand that. Like, and that's why I, I get that so much, bro. Like the strategy behind introducing people to something that's so abstract, meeting them where they are you yeah. know, and, and knowing how to reach to reach them you know like i think the best teachers are the teachers that 
can take, you know, take a complex piece of choreography or they can take complex calculation and explain it to the normal, like, you know, like to the un to the uninitiated, untrained mind. Like you can if you can explain that to them, I think that's the the biggest definitions of like teachers, you know what I mean? Sure. And and the people who who should be chosen to do that type of stuff. Um for sure. And I think um one of the better things that could have been done was it's like let people fall in love with Crump, you know? Mm. And as you get to know people, you know, they want to know more about that feeling or they have something going on in their life. That's the time to open up and you can reach out, minister, help them, guide them, you know, but to try to be like, Oh, you like Crump. All right. It's what you got to do. We got to go to church. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, well, mm. <laughs> this is the process. You got to do this. This is where we're at. You know, this is where all the best people go, you know? Like, no, nah, meet people where they're at and then get them out of there. Mm. Um, if it's something to where they need help, you know what I mean? Some people don't want help yet. It's not time. There's time. There's a season for everything, bro. Timing is always perfect in God's hand. So it's like one of those things to where we force something and it's like, we're trying to do his work. Like he'll tell us when, you know what I mean? It'll open up. You know what mm. I mean? If I'm, if I have someone that's just like, they don't got a lot of friends. They just want crump. Okay, cool. We're here. Boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, they might be like, hey, man, why, why are you so happy all the time? Oh, here we go. It's the conversation I was waiting for. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Would have been a better way rather than the force of how we try to do it. It's like, uh, but I understand again, it was that kingdom take it by force, you know? Do you, do you still remember the first time you felt it like that feeling? of crump like in your round oh yeah it was uh it's probably like my like fifth session i mean i've seen it you know i saw people like in it but that's what i was gonna say is like for people that understand or recognize essence you know and things like that um it's there's multiple ways that you could see people dance right like you see them external and you see them internal. Like mm. you see people dance externally all the time because it's not for them. It's like, Oh, this moves cool. It's for you. Like, it's for all y'all. I made this for you. You know, <laughs> you're like, that's cool, bro. That's, I liked it. That was crazy. That was a crazy move, you know? And then you see the ones where it's like, oh, you're dancing internal right now. Like this is, but I can't judge off of if, how they're dancing like that like it's you still have to judge off of the external because it's a competition you know yeah. i'm not gonna and that's why i'm saying i wouldn't judge off of essence like i'm not gonna be like oh you're you're tapped inside right now <laughs> um but honestly if you have essence it should make you better to win you know yeah why because you know who you are which means your character and personality is going to be better your get off is going to be better your material is going to stick more because it comes from who you are, you know? So in a sense, it should make you better, but doesn't necessarily, you know, doesn't mean you should just be like get into a super emotional inside mode because you might lose to somebody that was just dancing on the surface, but they trained, you, mm -hmm. know? <laughs> yeah. you know, they trained and they prepared for you and they hit you with some stuff. Um, so I don't think that uh, it's something you should judge on, but I do think it's something that'll make someone better. You know, mm -hmm. um, when you could tap in uh, and you can feel the difference, it's someone's willpower, it's someone's heart, someone's soul. And you're like, yeah, you got the dog in you. You fight <laughs> and, and you look like you're not going to stop getting off until you pass out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you look unstoppable right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I believe that uh, that's something that will make someone better. But a lot of times people fake that or they think that that's all you need, which no. You know, you still got to have talent because it's a competition. Mm -hmm. So if it's anything, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> anything that you find yourself subject to getting judged on, then there's technicalities at that point. Yeah. You know, emotion is not enough. It's just like, bro, if you're looking at like, put you in a perspective of like, let's say you're judging the world of dance, right? Mm -hmm. World finals. And you're looking at somebody that's they 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 drop the craziest contemporary piece in like the middle of their set, right? The most emotional, 
not even say the middle. Let's let's say the end. They end with the craziest emotional thing, and they start crying on stage, and everybody's like, "Oh, I felt that. I felt that." But then you see someone come out with one of the craziest musicality technical pieces, and they just destroy the music. And you're looking at your list like, "Oh yeah, they they get the points, though." You know what I mean? <laughs> like these people are getting the points. Like I felt that, but it's I can't say they won because you know, they cried on stage and everybody felt something. It's like, I related to that, but it's still a dance competition. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you feel about that? Uh, well, I've always answered that type of stuff is, is if that was the fucking case, then they'll let the crowd judge, you know? Right, they, of course. Yeah. You pick judges based on their ability to, to look at it subjectively and say, okay, mm-hmm. yes, you might be feeling this right now, and I'm feeling it with you, but you did not cover X, Y, and Z. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's not going to make me overlook the dropped hats and bandanas and this and that. Like, it's like a choreo, a choreo scene, you know, like it, the dude who was late to his spot, the girl who was off time. Like, yes, you guys were going off. Yes, it's this part where you're mm-hmm. going off, but she was off. Homeboy was not in formation. Like, I'm sorry. Like, yes, I felt it. You guys were feeling it. I know you, you probably worked real hard. It's a memorial piece or whatever, but I can't judge you that way, you know? Right. And I think that's, I think more people need to get into that. Like, well, let's, let's please, let's, let's recognize that. Let's, let's recognize those patterns because it mm-hmm. does, it gives people room to be congratulated on the side. You know, like I remember, right. um, I remember I battled Biggie and he fucked me up. Let's be real. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I, he fucked me up. Okay, he called me out. He fucked me up. But I was, I was, I was getting off, right? And I, yeah. and I even told myself, like, okay, I lost right now, but I was getting the fuck off. And other people came up. I was like, yo, good job, man. Hey, dude, you did good. Like, yeah, you lost, but dude, you did really good. Like, thank you. Like, and it's like, it gives people that space to do that for each other. You know what I mean? Even in defeat, mm. still find these little micro wins. You know, like the tiny, yep. the little wins. Um. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. No. One thing, one thing I wanted to make sure too that I want it. Cause that's, that's a, that's an eye opening moment when I'm hearing you like describe like your first moments filling some of these, like this feeling, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then also hearing your expression on it. Like, so if you were, if you were going to explain Like, if you were going to explain this all over again to a young, like, 15-year-old LeVar, like, how would you, how would you tell him to approach it and, and what advice would you give him on it? Um, ooh, that's a good one. Uh, in reference to Essence? Yes, sir. Um, first thing I would say is I know this is obviously not the thing that's easy to hear. And honestly, it's not something that you would just believe, but um, the answer is not in trying to please people, right? Like remain yourself and the hype will come because regardless, you know, crump is crump movements, movement, the hype will come. Um, but it's about, being the best version of you because when you can do that and continue to create and perform again, the hype will come. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to follow trends, like this is what's happening in dance right now, it's not going to work. You're going to lose your passion quickly. You know, you're going to get tired. You're going to want to (laughs) stop because you're not doing it for you anymore. When you start doing it for other people, it's it's going to drain you. And I think that drains the essence, honestly, because you're not feeding yourself anymore. You're not feeding what's inside of you. You're not feeding your identity. Your identity starts changing. It's like it starts morphing almost. You know what I mean? It's like a fog comes over your face and it's just like I have to do mm-hmm. whatever I have to do. Mm-hmm. Um, And you start losing sight of who you are because you think what you're doing is right. It's not about what's right or wrong. Mm. You'll learn the technicalities, you know, 
of what's good and what's not, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's about how you do it that makes you who you are. That's what makes everyone unique. That's what makes every, that's, that's what makes styles unique. So it makes personality and character is unique. It's how you do it. And it's not like, oh, I'm just going to do this because this is technically right. I'm going to jab like this because that's what everyone does. Mm -hmm. No. How do you feel like jabbing right now? You know what a jab looks like. Now, how do you want to do it right now? You know, that's the most important thing. And I know you're like, oh, but that's weird. That's fine because someone's going to love it. And eventually Mm -hmm. everyone's going to want to do it that way. And then that's going to become the new normal, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's how new styles are made. That's how new things are created. Um, And you'll never find your style or it'll take too long if you keep adapting to what you know other people are doing Mm -hmm. and when that finally clicked for me that's when i found myself in chrome Mm -hmm. and if you want to do it sooner start now (laughs) (laughs) because then i would have found that within two years rather than nine well, it was like 2012. No, I still was faking it. It was like 2014, 2013. So, 10 years. No, this was 2004 I started. So, yeah, nine years. It took nine years for me to find myself in Grump. And there's people now trying to, you know, oh, I got it. But you don't even know who you are yet. Yeah. You don't. Because yeah. all you want to do is compete. You want to battle. You want to do these tournaments. You don't even spend enough time with yourself. And I was labbing, bro. I was labbing like <laughs> every day or every other day. You know what I mean? Yeah. People aren't doing that these days. Mm-hmm. Or they're just sessioning by themselves. Like I was labbing. Like, wow, how can I stand? How can I, you know, oh, this is the stomp. I'm going to do this. I'm going to train these stomps. Okay, now how do I want to do it? Like, no, people aren't going to like that one. Let me watch some YouTube videos, you know, and then boom, mm-hmm. my mind turns into whatever these people are doing. <laughs> Um, which when they, when Crump was created, they weren't, <laughs> didn't have YouTube to look at. They didn't, you know, mm-hmm. so I could have created my own experience, but I was so focused on other people. And I think that's what people do now. That's why I think, mm-hmm. again, there's an identity crisis. You're too focused on other people that you don't know who you are. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm glad for people like you, because you've had the experience of, so many individuals and hearing good advice that you're able to do that. But there's people in other States or other countries that don't have that. They have some people telling them what's right and what's wrong. Do this or don't do that. And then it's Mm -hmm. like, they're like a robot. They have these crazy hiccups. bro. And, and to even think like, to even think like where, where like Crump started, right? Where these, young you know young kids were dancing in somebody's living room you know and they were so like nowadays when i really try to think of where i'm at in crump and what crump means to me and these even around the topics of like essence like i try to put myself in that living room you know with those people all these young guys who are just dancing and they're figuring this thing out, like this thing called crump, they're figuring it out. And whatever was happening in that room, whatever, you know, that same feeling that we get when we're at the sessions or we win these battles and, or we're just with everybody in the community, that common connection, like that feeling, that's what I try to think of like a lot nowadays, a lot more now than ever. Um, Cause I do feel like I'm going through a lot of changes in life and it's affecting my dance, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the way that I think that I process crump right now is going through a lot of changes as well. And so to think like, or, you know, around these topics of like essence and like who we are, like, you know I mean? I think everyone always needs like a self reality check, you know, Mm -hmm. you need a soft reset, you know, hit, hit a soft reset, re update the fucking software, dude, because yeah, you know things things change things the way that style the styles of crump moves you know Mm -hmm. i remember when i first got in crump everybody was doing like the the hat grabs like with the chin like they would do that oh my god (laughs) and then the trends uh, there was the fucking 
like the invisible bar thing i still do that a lot uh that was a that was a trend like you know so the way that people move just it changes and and you guys are were, i i will say it from a young dudes to to a to a more seasoned very seasoned crumper you guys are right crump changes daily yes it does yes For the sure. fuck it does yes mm-hmm. yes the fuck it does and so that's why i'm glad to have this talk with you man about like yeah. some of the raw parts of crump how it changes how it can kind of like ebb and flow with everybody man it's a, it's a good you know you know why crump changes every day why is that what did i say the essence of crump was Oh, like your your identity, your self expression, and so and who you are. So if you change every day, Crump's gonna change every day, huh? Because in my opinion, that's the essence of Crump, huh? See, and these type of things are the things that I think about. Like, if I say this is the essence of Crump, does it apply in every situation? You mm-hmm. know, um. That's why to say, like, and there's certain things, and yes, you know, it can be multiple things again. Like, okay, essence of crump is God. Okay, it's something you can feel, something you can share. Um, does he change every day? No, but is if he's a true and living God, then he'll, you know, constantly keep growing. You know, but it's like, is that, is that the best way to put that? You know, like it mm-hmm. sounds kind of interesting but um we grow and change every day so of course crump is going to grow and change every day uh it gives back what we put in Mm. you know same way it's like we're not gonna get smarter if we don't put nothing in bro like (laughs) so because we constantly keep feeding it it is of course going to grow and change every day Mm. and the reason it's like dang i feel out of tune with crump like because you stop feeding it you stop putting yourself into it and then there's a you know it's the craziest thing right if we're talking about essence and you see someone that hasn't trained in a long time they haven't danced they haven't been around they show up and they go crazy at the session Mm -hmm. love to see that because they'll always be who they are Mm, true you know (laughs) <laughs> like they're when they crump it's they're always going to put themselves into crump so no matter what they might not be the most technically sound but that essence is going to hit yeah <laughs> and then there's yeah. some people that it's just not there because they're trying to be so technically sound and it's like bro just be you and just do what you would have done before you know um and i think that's something that like i love seeing that from from hitman is i think there's a point in time where he was trying to be so different that like it felt like, you know, the essence wasn't there. But then like I recently was commenting on his live and he was talking about, um, you know, he found the truth. He accepted the truth, you know, and all this stuff. And you see it in his dance because mm. it's like he found himself and he realizes this is me. This is what's going on. This is the truth. This is how things are. This is what it is. And his Trump looks crazy again, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's why you can always tell when someone's going through something in Crump too, because it just reflects who you are. Reflects, man. It's so interesting. Yeah, that's that's always going to be my the I think like the bat signal for me with Crump is mm-hmm. is when when you can tell people are really in tune with with who they are in Crump who they are in dance in general they're just out there and there is some vets and ogs like i could have never seen them dance they probably haven't danced in years but just the way they're standing there like bro you're about to you're about to wreck shit once you decide to go in like it's just there that there's an even if it's a short time yeah, because a lot of times cause the stamina that's still different. That's your body. That's training. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's ability versus talent on that one. Exactly. That's <laughs> ability versus talent. Um, Real. Dude, like, like yeah, and and that's where like a whole like that whole even beginning part of the podcast, man. Like that's what some people got to understand. Sometimes people are born with this talent. 
they are just born in tune with who they are and what they can do where their body goes like it just doesn't feel awkward for them there is i mean there's a couple dancers i know who just got it like you know again Mm -hmm. the no ones you know they have some just something they were born with bro you had a leg up on the game and you recognized it within yourself that this is what you're good at you didn't waste time paintballing you know you said on yeah. this dance shit you know um and I they think- they came in they came in true to themselves mhm absolutely and that's the craziest thing man Kyle will always be Kyle and you see it when he dances and it's freaking insane yeah yeah. He didn't come in like, hmm, what should what do I want my character to be? Like, no, I'm going to dance and it's me, bro. Mm-hmm. That's all like when people ask about like, oh, I got a new character or I made this up, and it's like, that's not even you. Yeah, yeah, like come on, man. And, <laughs> and when they dance, you see it, man. hmm And honestly, that's one of the things that I've I've been speaking to to Dredd about too. Like there's times when Dredd hits and there's times when he doesn't. And even though he's a talented dancer with a lot of experience, but it's like Sometimes you're you, and sometimes you pretend to be someone else. Yeah, and you're you're just not and there. You don't need to be. There. Yeah, yeah, like because you think that you have to be more than yourself for people to respect you, and then now it's like no, because now you look different and you look like you're faking it. Mm. You know, you're just doing too much. Like, bro, just be you. You all right? You're good. <laughs> Yeah, you are had, good. Be you. <laughs> he had called me too. He had uh he had called me and I really respect him for it, but he called me about um he was like, Oh, I want to use the Green Ranger character and all this stuff. He's like, But I know you were doing that at one point. I was like, Bro, go do your fucking thing, dog. I was like, I don't I was like, why don't you just stick with dread? Like, you know, but that's always I don't know. I've always been I've always been a huge fan and, and try to be his biggest supporter, man. Um yeah. I just know that he has so much potential and uh, he gets stuck in his head sometimes. And then it's like he overthinks it. And it's like, bro. And it's one of those things where, like, we have a good relationship because, I mean, he used to be Kid Basics, bro. He was Kid Basics. Like, he was one of the first first Kid Basics, I think, because that's when I switched my name. And, yeah. And he was with me for a little bit. And then after that, I think uh, – he ended up being under Mad Hatter. I don't know if I had to drop the whole fam. I'm trying to remember. It was something to where I had to do that. And honestly, I wish more big homies would do that, man. Like, Chez had a conversation with me and basically wanted me to drop my whole fam. And it's because... uh, No, no, no. It wasn't even on them. It was about me. Because Mm -hmm. I couldn't focus on me because I'm constantly trying to give. I couldn't receive. Mm. I couldn't be the best student because I was trying to be a teacher. But I wasn't even done learning, you know, so it's like, stop trying to do all that, like be here, be present, be figure out who you are, go through this process, and then you can help others figure out who they are, because how can you do that if, you know, you can't help them if you don't know, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm like, damn, and then it was like, I get new information, and it's like, oh, thanks, here, guys, like, bro, I didn't even retain it, I didn't get to master it, it was just like, you just know, passing the um, buck, passing the buck. Yeah, and that's why I love um, the pro- the student process that, like, Sherwin had, for instance, because when I met Sherwin, he was Little Beast, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually, like, battled him during one of the first times we met, and I was like, this dude's about to be freaking crazy. Like, Let me just uh, make sure I get this one in the books and never battle him again. <laughs> 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 Let me decline every other future opportunity. <laughs> um but watching him grow, man, like he always had the beast fam, but it was like they were brothers before he was big homie, you know, mm. because there was still OG beast, you know what I mean? And like watching him, it's like, like a uh, freaking young beast, bro. Uh, freaking Jesse is J beast. Like they were uh freaking Gabe, Gabe's crazy ass. So yeah. it's like, you know what I mean? Like seeing that dynamic they had because they like grew up together. It was freaking amazing. But they were like bros. It wasn't like Beast is the big homie. It was just they were bros. Yeah. So when he ended up taking the name Beast, it's like they were still bros, you know? Yeah. So he could still focus on being a student without having to be like, oh, pour into him. But he would take it, soak it in, 
and then give them, you know, information while they had things to work on. But he was focusing on being a student. Mm -hmm. Um, And then he started building his empire. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, he took that time and he dedicated it. And a lot of people, crumpers these days, it's like they just start crumping. And instead of learning to be a student, it's like, let me think of a name. Okay, I got three names. I'm this, aka this, aka this. Like, bro, you don't even you didn't even master who you are yet. <laughs> so yeah. you got three names because you're just losing it. But yeah, man. I um I don't know. I just appreciate the convo though, because I love talking about these things, but I don't want to make a Crumpers page post. And I yeah. don't want to go live about it. Um I kind of want to sometimes, but then I realized sometimes uh, it'll just fall on deaf ears. Like there's a couple of people that'll listen, a couple of people that'll actually like believe or hear, you know, what's going on. And then there's others. that will just be like, no. All right, fine. Well, I you mean, are stubborn, man. Well, that's the one thing like with podcasts in general that I've always enjoyed is you can bring a couple people on, you know what I mean? And have them exchange these ideas, have them, explain and i know some people won't come on because they're maybe afraid that they're going to get like attacked you know by me or whatever but it's like bro like bro i am going to be trust me i have my opinions but my job as the host again like judging battles is is you know to hold my biases and give Mm -hmm. you your chance to display your information you know what i mean how do you see this? Oh, why do you see it this way? Oh, how did you come to see it that way? Oh, okay, cool. And then keep the shit fucking pushing. Like, yeah. So yeah, you were when you did comment, I was like, yes, let's get a let's get a part fucking let's get a part number two because this is gonna be this is gonna be tight. Um and again, it's not like you know, I definitely wanted to have the talk. Not that I didn't f- respect people's opinions, but right kind of like you kind of said it earlier where it was like can you take in this answer your explanation and apply it to all things Mm -hmm. and i look at it that way with a with stuff like this where it's like what is absolute truth what can i what can i what answer can i give that can uphold any scrutiny can hand can handle any any form of refutement like this that is absolute truth And so, so to have some, some conversations and maybe not always get to the bottom of it, but at least start the conversation, you know, that's, that's how you get the ball rolling on things and not in just these fucking stupid Facebook posts. Right. And, um, honestly, I was excited to have the conversation because, (laughs) well, you've, you've known me for a long time too. And like, I mean, I've been gone and just kind of living life. Um, time with my lady, time with work, time just being away, you know. Uh, and a lot of people know the relationship I've had with, you know, like Chez over the years, right? So they assume like, oh, he's going to say whatever he says or he's on his side. Like, there's a lot of times we don't agree. And in private, I'll be like, bro, what the hell? Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, even, even like the, like, for instance, the battle with like, him and bad news and beast right like you got the hell off on bad news <laughs> and i was like oh she saved those rounds for beast because those actually were there. <laughs> um and that's what everybody wanted uh and i love the dancing aspect of it and then when it started getting to the conversation at the end i was like this is getting weird <laughs> yeah. you know and it's like I love the belief system he's having for him because i saw the darkness he was in before right Mm. so it's like i'm happy for you do all of that you know um the thing that's frustrating (laughs) is the fact that he went away and did it and everybody was still having so much to say and do it's like bro he's not even looking at you guys (laughs) you know like that's the part that was kind of uh frustrating um and then when he does show up then of course everyone has stuff to say but uh i just don't agree with the way that you know, some of that was handled, especially like vocally and all the stuff that was said. And I'm like, uh, yeah, it gives flashbacks to a lot of people. Like, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done that. You know, just okay. let the dance happen, let it be what it is, and then mission accomplished or your job, whatever, and then get out of there, man. 
you know, <laughs> you yeah. don't got to keep doing all that because it just turns it into a whole nother thing. And then it looks crazy, you know? So that's something I don't agree with. Um, because like I said, again, I think there's a strategy to reach people. I don't think you have to, you know, go that way, that way. But again, Hey man, I'm not God. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what decisions are made or who says what, like I, I'm still cool with, with tight eyes, but I don't talk to him daily. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, Hey man, you good. You good. All right. You all right. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's one of those friendships at that point in time. Like I'm gonna make sure you good. I'm gonna check on you, whatever, but I don't have to check on you, you know, not anymore. And I don't got to be every day. Mm -hmm. I haven't talked to him in like, who? Maybe like a month now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's one of those things that when we do talk, it'll be like a message or something funny. Like, hey, bro, you remember this? This was crazy. He'll be like, hey, I remember that. And then it's just like, it's done. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> so it's not like, <clears throat> last few times we've talked, it wasn't even about crump. Like, <laughs> it was like, hey, man, my girl keep doing this. Your girl do this? This is crazy. I don't know how you deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm some you know bro shit. Yeah, I'm yeah, some bro like, shit. Yeah, and that's, that's literally it. And I don't think, people like the fact that I have that conversation with him, but it's like, it was never all about crump for us. Like mm -hmm. I've been under him since I was 17. You know, I'm 33 now. Yeah. I've been knowing each other for a while. Yeah. Like I had arguments with my dad and he drove all the way down to San Diego, picked me up and brought me up there so I could hang out. I needed to go to church so we could go to church. And you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's way beyond crump, bro. It's not even training. I didn't even get as much training as a lot of other people, but it was never about that for me. You know, mm -hmm. of course I wanted it, but who don't want to get training from tie dye, especially throughout all those years. Like, <laughs> you know um, what I mean? Yeah. It was exciting, but like, <clears throat> that's not what it was always about for me. And I think that's why I probably still had a relationship with him the longest. And even when everybody else was like, Oh, he's on church stuff again, I'm leaving. It's like, but if you saw how this dude was, you know what I mean? Like how dark it was and how he was acting. And it's like, damn. And it got to the point where it was kind of heavy. And it's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm. And I left the country, you yeah. know, which is why when I started seeing that stuff and I was like, damn, he found something to hang on to that kind of made him feel better. And I'm like, I don't know if that's my fault because I left. You know mm. what I mean? Because I was that type of person to hold him down, you know? Yeah. But I can't. I can't be, I couldn't stay there. Cause then what am I going to do for myself? You know what I mean? Yeah. We're both trying to figure stuff out. Like, no, nah, man, you know, you're going to figure out whatever you got to do. God's going to help you however he needs to help you. And he's going to help me however he needs to help me. Like I gotta, I had to step away and do something different, like radically different, you know? Yeah. And it still brought me where I needed to be. So yeah. Yeah, and man. So I didn't agree with, again all the things but i mean we've been saying that god was we didn't say essence we said he was the heart of crump yeah. right and it was like a spiritual thing it's the heart of crump it's your soul your spirit it's where it is it's like your reason why mm -hmm. and if god is your reason why then he's your reason why you know he's your identity it's who it is who you are what you want to do what you need to do you know like the heart of crump is that now now we're saying essence it's the same thing as, you know, <laughs> we've we've said different things over the years and it ends up turning into something else and something else. But it's, you know, still the same thing. Like, I don't think they were. Well, what was it? I don't know. I'm trying to think of a term. Amp. Mm. Getting amped. Now it's liveness. You know, it wasn't called liveness at the beginning. You're getting amped. It's something that involved. Everybody was talking about getting amped. That's what Chad was talking about. Like, yeah, man, you got to get amped. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now it's now it's getting live. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Living in liveness. Because you can't live in being amped. Amped was like an action. Liveness is like a state, a place that you could be in now, you know? Mm -hmm. Which we, we know we've been live, you know, once you get yeah. live, it's like, how long can I stay live? You <laughs> yeah. know, like <laughs> you stretch this out, dude. Right. You know what I mean? So now it's like, I can stay here. This is crazy. Like, I'm not just visiting this mansion. I can live here. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to stay here. 
so yeah man it's 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 something that you know things change it evolves we use different terms terms turn to they tend to fit the moment we're in the season we're in you know mm. so because it's a heavy time of where god's becoming a topic again whether it's forced or voluntarily uh mm -hmm. the topic's there so the word essence is there you know um but everybody gets defensive because they're afraid it's that it's that dog that got hit you know what i mean it's like yeah. hey, essence. everybody's like whoa watch out man don't say that <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Essence, god yeah. essence crumping i don't know man don't yeah. i ain't no demon like, what? I said you were. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the first thing people say. Yeah, and, like, there's been a lot of, like, side chatter. And even, like, with the boys from Ox, right? Like, they like they ask, like, so what's, so what's the deal with this? It's like, bro, you got to remember. When these first conversations were happening, some of these dudes were, like, 17, 16, 18 years yeah, old. Yeah, bro. And there were disagreements. And some of those disagreements were never resolved. Like, For sure not. Crump is full of unresolved issues, bro, and it affects everybody. Five years ago, five years ago, you didn't have dudes talking about mental health. You didn't have dudes all. talking about their feelings. And what, what's the fucking new thing right now? Um, uh, uh, attachment styles. We didn't talk about that type of shit. I've never like, even heard of that. Bro, attachment styles is a thing. That's a thing right yeah, now. I've been hearing about like gaslighting. I was like, I've never used that. I heard of gas stations. <laughs> and then it's like a whole new thing. And I'm like, let me Google this. And I learned the term and I was like, oh, that's crazy. To gaslight okay. somebody. It's like basically to not say what you mean. I'm like, oh, we call that. <laughs> Bullshitting. You know yeah. what I, mean? <laughs> I called that a liar in my day. Right. Yeah, I don't know what you <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, for real. But it's a nice it's, it's the fake, it's a half lie. So yeah, gaslight is a half lie. Yeah, and, and I think people too kind of are I think more people are hopefully starting to hit that age now where they can look at their homies and be like, nah, gee. Because uh, that's I'm the same way with Sherwin. He'll come to me with something and sometimes, you know, I agree. And then sometimes I got to tell him like, big homie, you tripping. Like you're tripping mm. right now, bro. Like you need to call like, nah, don't, don't be doing that. Like, or don't, or, mm. you know, <clears throat> not all ideas are good ideas, guys. Like uh, newsflash world, not all ideas. Right. Are good ideas. Um, and so I, I hope more people start getting into that space too, instead of like fearing the conversations that might come with disagreement you know what i mean hopefully we're at the age where we can talk stuff out and not lose friends just because mm -hmm. we disagree over something or or you may have taken something a certain way and i maybe didn't mean it like that but let me explain like you know whatever however they can fit that shoot man um lavar man i didn't i didn't want to keep you wait what were you gonna say no i was gonna say um Honestly, I think that's one of the sad truths that actually happened with mm. me and Sherwin, for instance, is we were super close. Like you've you've known, you know, you've seen us. We had a whole fam together and all that stuff and whatever the process is. I ain't talked to this man in like a year and a half. Um, and I tried to reach out. I don't know if it's because of, again, the situation he had with Chez and then I was still cool with him. But it's just like throughout that time, it's just he disappeared. And we just stopped communicating. And I was like, I tried like a couple more times to reach out. And then I was just like, oh, it is what it is. And then at my age now, being 33, I'm like, I'm not about to chase someone's attention. Like, well, you know, my girlfriend, I got a fiance, bro. Like, I'm chilling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, my so name like, Yeah, so it's like, I'll try, which is, which is good. Like, the fact that you don't know, because it's not for everyone to know. And it's not drama or beef. It was just like, well, if we're not communicating, then we'll yeah, right. just gonna talk to my you man. Know? I guess yeah, and then it's like, and then Garrett's still in like you know my fam chat because certain strikers I consider you know team easy because I've known him for a long time. Um, so you know Garrett was when you know, I think he was the first. Yeah, I think he was the first striker. So at that point, it's like, regardless, like bro, you welcome wherever I'm at. You know what I mean? And then like Rogue comes around, you're welcome wherever I'm at. Mm -hmm. Um the the new uh lady striker it's like i remember you was taking privates from me you welcome wherever i'm at like we cool you know what i mean if you want to know my side of things that's great come on you're welcome and i'm not going to force anything down i'm not going to bad mouth sherwin because i have no issue with him you know it's just 
I didn't agree as well with the way that he handled the situation with Chez and like went on like social media about it. I'm like, man, you already know he public enemy number one. Everybody's going to side with you and smack that man down anyway, you know? Mm. So I didn't agree with that. And I don't know if that's what it was or whatever the problem was, but it's like, I'm going to let people around me, especially friends know how I feel in a situation. Mm -hmm. I was going to leave. I was going to leave Jess's fam. Like while all that stuff was happening before the whole situation happened with him and Sherwin, because Mm -hmm. I'm like, this man said he, my friend, I ain't heard from him. You know, you ain't heard from him. What's going on? You know? And then right at that moment, I'm like, Hey man, what's going on? Like, or I'm about to be out, you know? And then we have that conversation, simple conversation. I'm like, all right, we good. You good. I'm out. You know, I ain't got nothing to worry about, you know? And mm-hmm. it was just that little, that little connect. Sometimes you just gotta have that little connect of again, like you good. I'm good. All right. We good. Cool. All right. You tripping. All right. You ain't tripping. All right. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and that was the shortest little conversation that Chaz and I had like, Hey man, you said this, you doing this, like you talking about me this way, or you said I did this or whatever. No. Okay, cool. Well, we out. That's it. You know, mm-hmm. um, it wasn't a deeper conversation of, Hey man, you need to do this. You should come here. Like, no, just a little conversation. Um, and then me and Sherwin never had a chance. I don't think to have that conversation. I think he just wanted to move forward at that time. Um, or in between that time, I know other people were like coming together and stuff like that too. And I'm like, well, I'm going to back out. I'm in another country. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not my business. Mm-hmm. I don't mind. But, um, again, I, you know, I would have liked things to be different, but at the same time, if that's the way it's going to go, it's the way it's going to go, you know, but it's up to him, man. And then it's one of those things to where, again, I'm not going to chase no situation. I'm going to see what's going on, but then I'll know how I'm going to feel about it. If there ever is a time where we see each other and it comes up, I'm going to be like, that's weird. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and it'd be hard for me to fake it. Like if I go to Cali or something like that and I see you, it's gonna be like, Oh, was a Brian seen you in a long time and all that. And then if I see him like, what's up, man, I'll be like, Oh, yeah. Hey you sure like what are you what are you doing <laughs> we could talk we could talk first before i shake your hand because i don't know what's really going on you know um and it's one of those things where a talk will need to happen you know before anything else but it's not drama it's just that awkward silence you know like, well, all right yeah sometimes you, you gotta know? iron shit out you know what i mean and and yeah. iron it out and it's not like that's you know with a lot of people i i've started i've started asking them like are you coming to me to vent right now are you coming to me for advice do mm-hmm. i need to like like please don't tell me names like or you know i'll right, ask right, right, a right, list right. of different things you know because sometimes it's just not my business you know what i mean like for sure and and a lot of people i, I don't know i don't know if it's the community the way that it's just kind of like structured and and how these regions like how we interact with each other but like the need to air out every single piece of business you got going on is kind of annoying. It's an, it's nutty to me. Like I, Mm. no one, no one has ever known anybody I've ever beefed with in Crump like that. Like no one's ever known any issues, any arguments I ever had with dread. No one's ever known any arguments I've ever had with Sherwin. No one's ever known. Never. Right. It never would never know it. Like, you know what I mean? Real life stuff. No crump stuff. Hell yeah. (laughs) I know. <laughs> I ain't looking at him right now. And if I see him, we get off on him. Like, you know, you know, oh, but like personal stuff, no, I'm not out here telling everybody like whatever situations are. Like, no, nah, man. And it's definitely not a crump issue because you know it just has nothing to do with crump. So um unfortunately we both crump. <laughs> That's the only yeah. thing is we both crump, we both know what crump is, but it's not a crump situation. It's like I've known you for too long for it to be like this and uh I don't like how that is. You know what I mean? So, you know, whatever, however it gets handled, you know. Um, But again, man, it's not drama. I'm going to let you go. I know you're ready to go too, man. I'm I'm hungry. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, I was about to say, I don't want to keep you much longer, dude. I I hadn't even even looked at the time, dude, and didn't realize. I just looked up. I was like, we hit two hours, bro. Yeah, bro. It's a fucking good conversation, dog. Oh, my God. Um, Yeah. Lavar, my man, do your whatever social medias you want to drop, or if you want to drop a gym of the night, 
I do want to say thank you again, bro, for coming on. You know, I always appreciate talking to you and shit. I'm glad that we had that that conversation because it's a good perspective and and I hope to hear more from more people, you know, and, and more from you later too. Yeah, man. My my biggest thing, um think for yourselves. Like I know a lot of people are like, um, thinking that people are being told what to do right now and stuff like that too. I mean, we definitely were under the influence before, you know, cause we were just like, well, what's right, what's wrong. Let's do what's right. You know, mm-hmm. continue to think for yourselves, um, find yourself, uh, man, it's hard to say, stay out of the social media stuff, but I mean, social media is still good, man. It's fun. It gives you something to talk about, something to do. It gets you, you know, it's an open forum. It's, but it's when people take it too serious or too literal, understand that dance culture is dance culture. It's not a freaking fight club. Like Mm -hmm. not everyone's gangster and wants to fight, you know, not everybody wants to freaking hustle you for a business. Um, I agree a lot of mistakes were made over the years because a lot of people weren't business savvy, so they don't know how to reinvest. They did dumb stuff and they got themselves screwed over, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, just, just pay attention to, to who you are, what you're doing, what you're around, what's being said, what's being done. Um, yeah, man, just move accordingly. Focus on life, man. (laughs) <laughs> we're getting older yeah. we're getting older a lot of these yeah. people man have kids and they're too busy focused on other people so it's mm-hmm. like man focus on the things that matter like yes dance and culture is very important it's it's big it's a lifestyle it's a way of life but unfortunately this is scary news but it's reality mm-hmm. if something happened and you couldn't dance anymore you're still alive, man. man. Yeah. What are you going to do next? You know? So not, not to say it as, you know, something to scare people, but it's like, understand that life, life goes on. And there's a lot more, you know, I remember I was having a conversation with someone that said Crump is life. And I was like, eh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Crump is amazing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could make it a lifestyle. You could do all these things, but no, nah, man, you can't marry Crump. You can't have kids with Crump. You can't, you know. Um, and a lot of these, just because you're a man in Crump, don't mean you got to marry a woman in Crump or be with a girl that's in Crump because uh, maybe she just want to express herself too, man. And she don't she don't want that feeling of feeling like you're, pre- you're praying on her. Like, <laughs> yeah. every time you're a guy and you see a new girl coming to Crump, that don't mean that that's a single opportunity. You know, mm-hmm. like, nah, that's just... So another woman that wants to enjoy dance, the culture, or maybe they just need something to be a part of. That don't mean you need to go try to be their friend right away and try to, no, man, no, no, no. <laughs> let, let that woman be alone, man. Leave her yeah. alone, support her while she dance and get out of her face. That's all. That's all that needs to happen, bro. Hype her up and get out of her face. <laughs> yeah, for real. Let her go home. <laughs> you freaking creep <laughs> oh my god bro all right man you uh you stay safe brother i appreciate you um i'm gonna let you do your sign off because i ain't gonna try to sign off your show <laughs> well nah man just thank you again <laughs> everybody who watches and who listens go follow my guy yeah um until next time dude i'll, I'll shoot you a message right now though yeah yeah for sure man all right brother love you man all right, man. Take care, man. I'm- <laughs> oh my God, Lavar is such a trip, you guys. That was Lavar, aka Basics, aka Twin Star Ripper, on the smoking section. Yeah, you guys need to tune in, subscribe. Make sure you guys go follow him. Um, he he is. I, I want to make sure that I say that he is one of the most creative minds that I know and to watch him like, like come like he was like coming back into crump when I first met him. And then like, just to see the expertise and then to watch him push himself to grow 
and then seeing him take like battles and shit like it was such a wild process that somebody so deep into the game already like put that pressure watching them put that pressure on themselves and i was very new to the game and it caused me to put a certain pressure on myself and so being around him in his association i feel like has brought a lot of value a lot of value to my life and i want to make sure i say that have tough conversations people have conversations that might make you feel a little awkward or that you may <clears throat> you may feel that you're uneducated in, you should still approach those conversations because the uninitiated, the uninitiated becomes knowledgeable. They become wise in the craft by seeking the guidance of those of the initiated, right? Take it from me until next time. Love you guys.